blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Luke chapter 5. May I ask you a question tonight that looks to you and me almost foolish, but a wise question. How many of you believe the word of God? How many of you believe that God is whom he says he is? How many of you believe that God can change your destiny? All right. Luke chapter 5. Beginning from verse 1, it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. 
Say with me loudly, God will meet me at the point of my need. Now, I want to say this simply tonight. In America, you have so many insurance companies that guarantee you when things are not working well, they will help you. And the difference between civilized nations and poor nations is that poor nations have only one blessed assurance. Do you hear what I'm saying? I love the green card. I love food stamp. I love the plastic uh, credit card. But if I were to go to any store in Nigeria and bring that plastic out and collect things that I need, when I present that credit card, they will take the things I collected from me and send it back to the rack. Because they are not used to credit card. It's not because we are foolish, but they are teaching you how to owe no man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They teach you cash and carry. So you live too much indebtedness for your children. In the miracle story we are about to hear tonight, here was a man leading other men in the ministry of working hard to live to succeed. First and foremost, the day that Jesus met Simon Peter with this boat, he tried all he knew to do. He caught nothing. My Bible said he did not only do his best, but because he caught nothing, he was now washing his net. Many of you don't take care of what you have. And that in itself is recklessness. The Bible says of this same story in the book of Mark, they were not only washing their nets, they were mending their nets. When things are not going the way you want it to go, outsiders have no power to encourage you inside. Many times when you are down, most of your friends are those more down than you. Somebody didn't hear what I'm saying. Many times when things are not in your favor, the people you talk to are those worse than you. But the good news is this. If you are a wise man or a wise woman, don't look for somebody crying to comfort you when you are in trouble. Let me put it this way. If Pastor Gary were to have ministry problem, and he calls me and says, Papa Idahosa, I need your help. I need your prayers. And I say, what's happening? He says, this is this, this is this. And I say, you don't know what I'm facing here. For the last three days. <laughs> Gary, I need your prayers. You don't know what I'm facing in Africa. <laughs> He's going to drop the phone down quietly. <laughs> Sorry plus sorry equals to double sorrow. You don't need a sorry brother. You need a man when you say, I'm down. You say, come on, get up and rise and shine. You don't need a man when you say, I need your prayer, I'm sick. He said, I've been in hospital for four days now. You need a man who will say, don't finish your statement. 
I take authority and dominion over that foul spirit of headache, of chest pain, of business rock. I rebuke it and command you loose in Jesus' name. That's whom you need. Somebody say big amen. Sometimes people complain, even in the church. For two weeks now, nobody visited me. You know what Jesus said? You should visit the sick. Some people complain. For the last five days, nobody said, how are you to me? Jesus didn't ask you to look for who will say sorry to you. He asked you to heal the sick and touch the weak. If you put yourself in an advantage position, you use it to the glory of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Here came Jesus, met this man, three days, fished, caught nothing. And Jesus, first of all, took note of where he was fishing. He has so pulled the sheep out of the water that he anchored it. He anchored the sheep. And Jesus said, first and foremost, as a fisherman, your sheep should not be in land. Trust out of land. Look at your Bible. Trust out of land. Let it is a come to land. Look, maybe my Bible is different from your own. Look at it properly. He prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. Many of you are looking for a miracle in where there is obstacle. That's not how it works. Running from trouble doesn't cure trouble. Binding the devil is what brings results. Jesus said, you taking the sheep from where it ought to be. You brought it here. But if you really are a good fisherman, take the boat from there, bring it here. That's where the water is. Then Jesus now climbed. Oh my God, look at it. The Bible says now, he prayed him that he would trust out a little. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Principle number one, we must put God to our business. This man, if he met Christ, his once a wild friend, he wouldn't go forward. Every leader that wants to grow in the ministry, stop answering the name president and founder. That's not American English. Many people are founders. God is not a friend to founders. God is a boss to servants. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once upon a time, I was the founder of our ministry until I found that the Bible says, other foundation can no man lay. So I have to surrender my foundership to him because the Bible says Christ is the head of the church. Because the Bible says Jesus died for the church. He didn't die for evangelistic organization. And he's not coming back for evangelistic organization. He didn't say, I will build my association. He said, I will build my church. The first thing you ask yourself is, is Christ the chairman of my business? He gave him his boat and he sat on it. Oh, that you give God your business. And give him a seat. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Jesus needs seat in your business. He sat. Look at your Bible. He sat on the sheep. Then when he finished preaching, look at what he did in verse 4. 
Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. Now that I'm sitting as joint chairman of your fishing business, let me see how fishes will travel and say they are not at home. I made all the fish in the water. Now I'm your co-laborer and I'm the head of this business. Reach out to the deep. Many of you don't take risk. You are looking for fish in the surface. And by nature, big fish doesn't come to the surface. Every big fish goes down the water. Shark is not in the shallow water. Dolphin is not found in shallow water. Tiny fishes come to shallow water. And Jesus said, instead of going out, go deep. I don't know who is going out tonight. God sent me to tell you, go deep. Where you are running from, go back. Make Christ the chairman of that business and give yourself a second chance. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's see how Peter answered him. Number one, Peter answering said unto him, Master, stand up everybody, please. I know you are hearing what I'm saying. How many of you are hearing what I'm saying? Say loud with me, master. master. In English, what does master mean? The man who knows what to do when things are wrong. The master of my poor situation. The leader who knows what to do when I don't know what to do. Master, say that loud. Master. Question. When was the last time Jesus became the master of your sheep? When was the last time things got rough and you asked for a master instead of a servant? All our wrong and all our poor condition needs a master. One more time, say loud, master. master. Try two more times. Master. 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 Oh God. <laughs> you are aware of where I am, master. You know what to do, master. My trials and temptation are under your authority. When I'm confused, you are not confused. When I'm down, you are not at my level. Oh God. Somebody ought to call Jesus master tonight. Somebody should call him master tonight. We, we have toiled. We have toiled all night. I have taken nothing. Now, somebody say now. now. Never, are you with me? We have toiled all night. I have taken nothing. Never again in my life shall I be less. Can you put never in your life tonight? Can you add the word again? Talk back to me. Say never. never. Again. again. 
will, my job, my home, my business, be less. In simple human English, you are saying, notwithstanding. That's what you are saying in English. But that's not what the Bible actually said in Greek and Hebrew. Peter was saying, because you are standing, my less ended yesterday. I will never again be less. Can somebody claim that? <laughs> Say it loud. One more time. Nevertheless, at your word, less is over. Oh God. I'm prophesying. I'm prophesying on you tonight. I say I'm prophesying on you tonight. At the word of God, your less is over. In the name of Jesus, your less is over. Never again will I be less. Because of your word, my less is over. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Nevertheless, at thy word. I left America 26 years ago with $500. Hold your ears, I hear you. I got to England. The British Airways took $380 out of my 500 for excess. They charged me 3,000 pounds for the junks I took from America. I cried like a baby. And the manager said, young man, why are you crying? I said, that's all I have. I said, what do you want to do? You drop them or you carry them? I said, I want to take all. I said, what can you pay? I said, let's cut it into half. She said, pay such an amount. By the time we reckon what he agreed, it was $380. He left me with $120. I got to my country. The first 20 or 30 people that hugged me were on the floor by the power of anointing. We drove from the airport to the church. While we were singing and dancing, I was protecting my money. <laughs> then, out of zeal, I said, now it's time for tithe and offering. And the Lord said, bring it out. What says thou? Bring all out, drop it in the plate. I rebuke you, Satan. And the Lord said, when you finish rebuking me, buke. Put the money in the plate. I took the hundred and twenty dollars. My hand was shaking. I was weeping. People thought I was in the spirit. I was speaking in tongue. Oh, my mama is gone, 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 gone. Oh, my mama is gone, 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 gone. I dropped the 120 for the first time in my life. And the Lord said, never again. Will you be short of money for the rest of your life? Somebody join me to say, nevertheless. I dropped it 
We started building Bible college, hospitals, ministries, nevertheless. Who can join me to say nevertheless? nevertheless. Sit down. We will let down the net. Why will Jesus tell you to do what he does not believe will work? God never talked like that. And God cannot be your co-chairman in business and you sustain losses. He can sit in your boat and you catch nothing. I will let down the net. Listen to what my Bible said. When they had this done, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Say with me, net breaking. I didn't hear you. Add the word to it, miracle. Net breaking miracle. Say it together. Now use these three words with me. With Jesus in my ship, I can have net breaking miracle. Put the three together. Try it one more time. Try it for the last time. With Jesus in my sheep, I can have net breaking miracle. How many of you believe that? Listen to this. Look to the deep. For a catch. They threw their net spread it to the deepest part when it was time to pull it up they couldn't pull my bible said and their net break verse 7 read verse 7 very well and they beckoned unto their partners read your bible read your bible read it look at it read it and they beckoned to their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and do what? And do what? And do what? And do what? Not only from zero to surplus, I have enough miracle that I need help. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers 
pictures click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers videos can be shared on all social media platforms we need your help now Dr. Gary, the beckoning was not come and buy. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Partners come and buy. Was that what he said? What did they say? They are partners. Come and do what? Come and do what? It is because many of you are still living between hand and mouth that you can't give away. If you follow what I'm telling you tonight, what you have from now will be so much that you'll be looking for help. Collector, <laughs> listen to this. This will help you. They beckoned. Number one, their net break. Say that. Number two, they beckon to their partners. Come, help. Oh God. I, I, want to, I want to tell you what is in my own Bible. Different from your own. If their net break, how did the fish stay when they are looking for help? And what does that mean? The miracle that belongs to you cannot be missing. If the fish belong to you, It doesn't matter how much the net break, the fish will wait. I say your miracle will not vanish. Your fish will not disappear. Your next miracle will not run away from you. What God put in your vineyard will not escape. Somebody say loud amen. Look at verse 7. Everybody stand to your feet. Look at verse 7. This is what brought me here tonight. Verse 6. Their net break. Verse 7. They beckon unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ship, so that they began to sink. Say with me, net breaking, net breaking. both sinking, Miracle, miracle is what I need. All of you who are believing God for net breaking and both sinking miracle, come here now. May I ask you again, do you believe the Bible? Yes. May I ask you again, do you believe the word of God? Yes. May I ask you again, are you waiting and expecting net breaking, both sinking miracle? Yes. How many of you want to go from zero to surplus? Yes. Open your mouth and say, I, 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 Come closer, come closer, come closer, come closer. Everybody come closer. All of you are the back spread across the seat here. Spread, spread. Pastor Gary, come here. Mrs. Gary, come. Bishop Coletta, come here. If the word of God is true, we must experience it. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Do you have your Bible with you? Yes. Please. Open it. 
First King chapter 17. First King chapter 17. First King chapter 17. I love dealing with king. I'm so I'm tired of dealing with slaves. Hey, hallelujah. I'm tired of dealing with poor people. Amen. Sometimes I need that's why I never read the Bible they call New English translation because it's new. <laughs> and the new Bible does not have thou. It doesn't have. It doesn't have thus says the law. It gives you the English that is like newspaper. And no much miracle from such Bible. Look at my own Bible. It doesn't work too much. Listen to this. The word of the Lord came unto him, verse 8. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow to sustain thee. Yeah. Say zero. zero. Say zero. zero. Say zero. zero. When a widow begins to sustain a preacher, he's not only down, he's down and out. This is God telling a preacher like Gary or Idahosa, leave the brook side. Hear me, hear me, look at this. Verse, verse 7. It came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Many of you like to stay with your dried brook. Because your grandfather was a Baptist, you want to die a Baptist. Because your grandmother was a black Negro, you want to die a nigger. No, no. We shall be free. We shall be free someday. Say, God forbid. He cannot say it, he cannot, she can't say it because of their skin. <laughs> but I can say it because you don't need freedom if God set you free. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If after 2,000 years that Jesus said, slavery, finish. Poverty, finish. And you are still waiting for the day you will be free. Why are you asking for full stamp when you can get both sinking and net breaking miracle? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Any man training you to live on general welfare mm. is insulting your intelligence. Amen. Amen. You were not born for welfare. You were born to have warfare with the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. And cast him out. You were not destined to be poor. You are destined for God to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If I were to receive a letter from this man because he thinks I'm black and he put $10 inside, I will reply him and put $100. Mm. Don't judge me by my skin. Amen. Rate me by my skill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Look at verse 8. First Kings 17. The word of the Lord. Whenever things are going wrong, stop reading newspaper. Verse 9. Arise, say that I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. Say it again. I'm going to get up. 
Say, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Go. Go. Get up and go. Get up and go. Get up and go. Get up and go. There's something ahead of me. Mm, there's something ahead of me. I will get up and go. I will get up and go. There's something ahead of me. There's something ahead of me. Verse 10. So he arose. Some of you are fasting with your dry brook. Mm. Woo. <laughs> 21 days fast doesn't bring water to the brook. When your brook dry, get up and leave it behind. Mm-hmm. Say, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. There's a better plan. There's a better plan. Ahead of me. Ahead of me. If my brook dry, if my brook dry, I don't dry with it. I don't dry with it. I rise up. I rise up. And move forward. And move forward. Somebody shout hallelujah. Verse 12. She said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. If you want to die, don't cook the last meal. You die quicker if you don't eat. If you really want to die, don't eat your last meal. So it's a waste. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Give it to who want to leave. Yes, amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> you are anointed for prosperity. Glory to Jesus. Verse 13. Mm. Mm. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Say to me, I'm no more afraid. I'm no more afraid. But make for me first a little cake and bring it unto me. And after that, make for thee and thy son. Verse 14. Mark your Bible. For thus says the Lord God of Israel the barrel of me shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. For 1,000 days. Hey, yes, glory. Yes, <laughs> glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Until the yes. day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Yes. The miracle you are looking for is not in insurance. <laughs> it is God who will send financial rain mm-hmm. to your business. Mm-hmm. Yes. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm yes. saying. Give it till you get it. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. How many of you want to be big? Give the struggle in your hand out. Yes. Mm. That small thing will demean you. Mm -hmm. That small money will reduce you. Release it yes. to receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the next verse. Mm. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which is speak by Elijah. Mm. Say it with me. My littleness, My littleness. ended yesterday. I believe this message is blessing you. 
please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Second King chapter 4. Now give me your ears. That cruise was there before Elijah came. Say, I hear you. Amen. It was finishing before Elijah came. Yes. Amen. But the man of God used the heart of God to say. Remember we are on the subject? Say. Say. Believe it and say it. Yes. Open your mouth and say, Believe it, Believe it. And, say it. and say it. Bishop Coletta, that oil had finished. She couldn't even remember the thing that was there was shake and drop it. But when the man of God says a lie, now I want to use a word, begin to say it's a lie. You are poor. It's a lie. You cannot make it. It's a lie. You have nothing. It's a lie. You never grow. It's a lie. You can't prosper. It's a lie. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know why it's a lie? Because that's not what God says. Yes. Amen. Now begin to say, it shall be so. It shall be so. You will prosper. It shall be so. You have more than enough. It shall be so. You will grow. It shall be so. You are blessed. You are lifted. So. The Lord is on your side. So. Your oil will never finish. So. Your cruise will not waste. So. Your meal will not drop. It shall be so. Oh, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. The mouth of the Lord. And the mouth of God's man can change your destiny. Yeah. When I came here for the first time, I prophesied over this man. I prophesied over this woman. When I saw her for the first time 16 years ago, 
She had nine members or 13. I prophesied. When God in Lisa saw me 27 years ago, he prophesied. There are hidden treasures in you that the word of God needs to bring out. And tonight, your waste is over. The spirit of littleness is over. I cannot do it, it's over. I don't have, it's over. Second Kings chapter 4. Is anybody with me tonight? Amen. When God knows you can't make it by yourself, he sends someone to help you to make it. Glory. Chapter 4. There's a prophet in Delaware tonight. Amen. His name is Benson Idahosa. Amen. Sent by Jesus Christ. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Verse 2. <coughs> and Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in thy house? Tell me. And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil verse 4 when thou art come in thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels which you borrowed and thou shalt set aside that which is full so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. Say with me, she poured out. She poured out. How can you pour out out of what is nothing? <laughs> when God connects invisible pipe to your empty pot at the back. Somebody better hear me tonight. When the nozzle of miracle is connected to you, there may be a gallon in your front to fill a drum. The power is not in your gallon. The power depends on the nozzle. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? There's a faith nozzle entering you right now. Touch your back. Say there's a nozzle. There's a nozzle. Is that the name in America? Nozzle? In petrol station, what do you call it? No. Nozzle. You, you know what nozzle is? Yes. The thing that brings out what is hidden in the ground. Yes. Bishop, can you say it? I, 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 you know I don't understand English. Yes. A nozzle. What is it in English? It's a nozzle. What is it in America? Nozzle. What does nozzle do for you when you get to a fuel station? Do you see the petrol on the street? But well, when you put the nozzle, do you have faith your tank will be full? Yes. Do they fill your tank? Yes. Why will you believe in man's nozzle? And don't believe that God has enough nozzle. When thou art come in, Shut the door. Pour out. Listen to the covenant for you tonight. <laughs> so she went from him. <laughs> you see, the first step to a miracle is going. If you stay too much, life pass you by. Yes. In Luke 5, when they had this done. In 1 Kings 17, she went home. In 2 Kings 4, she went. A goer is a receiver. Don't stay with your dry brook. It doesn't matter how much you like dryness.
He went from him, shut the door, verse 6, and he came to pass. When the vessel were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There's not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Say with me from now, from now. No, more emptiness, no more emptiness anymore. In my home. In my home. The question was, where are the empty pots in the town? No more. Where are the empty bank accounts in your city? Where is the business that failed yesterday? No more. And the oil. Stay. And the oil. Stay. And the fishes. Stay. And the bread. Stay. And the meal. Stay. Any miracle yes. that God brought to your own house. No matter how much the net break, mm, mm. the fish will wait. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Second question. Are you willing to pour out? Yes. yes. First question. Hear me. Will you be willing to beckon to partners. Yes. yes. Okay. I, I, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Yes. Can your miracle help another person? Yes. 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 Third question. Ooh. Do you believe that God can give you net breaking and boat sinking miracle? Yes. yes. Number four. Do you believe that no matter how much the net is torn? And the sheep sink. The fish will get home. Yes. Final question. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Can God count on you yes. to help someone else? I want to challenge your faith tonight. If you are really a believer in the word of God. I finally asked this man. Because of what God put in my heart. Tonight. Many of you. Have hidden treasures. That Isaiah. Chapter 43, 44, 45. Talks about. But no prophetic word has been uttered to bring it out. Yeah, yeah. And God has used my mouth tonight. Mm. Yeah. Your cruise will never finish. Your oil will stay. Yeah, God is going to give you net breaking and boat sinking yeah. miracle. Yeah. Do you believe it? Yeah. I'm going to ask you to do something before we pray. I asked Dr. Gary Weston. What is the next level that this ministry is moving to? And he told me, we are going to build global distribution center. And I told God, just before I left the hotel, give me 100 people who will beckon to partners. Not because he's here. Not because she's here. There are few people in my life that we wouldn't have been doing what we are able to do in Africa if they were not by me, if they were not standing with me. Each one of you need a prophet.
to tell your hidden treasure to come out. I'm not sure you heard what I'm saying. Yeah. And to direct your destiny to a new location of far from shortages. Holy Spirit, Son of the living God, you who fed the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness, their feet were not swollen, their garment did not smell, and there was not one feeble man among them. I stand on your word tonight for 100 people who will look beyond the now and see you at your word to give them net breaking both sinking miracle in Jesus name and everybody say amen. amen we hope the last hour has been a time of faith and hope for you with our redemption hour broadcast however should you wish to write to us with any requests for prayers for any further information or possibly you wish to request for a cassette copy of this broadcast tape write to redemption hour broadcast PMB 1314 or PO Box 60 Benin City, Nigeria. We certainly would like to hear from you soon. Or you may reach us through any Church of God Mission Center nearest to you. Until next week, at the same time, God bless you real good. God that gave manna to two million people in the wilderness. Still alive. The God that surprised. and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbinidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, 
I met with the Archbishop my first time of meeting the Archbishop in the Hosa of Church of God Mission International. It was an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson the Hose University all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and I thank God it's particularly good for us whites British because in Britain uh, people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idaosa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. 
We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. Then he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. Chief Ibunidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came, he said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it. In 1974-75, I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world." Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone there 
previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders why he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, wait till I talk! Again! 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 Hey! Do you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. And 
one, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise, Child, I will lift up be my healed. Eyes. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I said it's Inwa Rata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the outside. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. So he said, they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. <laughs> and then I went back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand I couldn't wait. And I ran out. with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that 
surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed. And he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh, we, we used to call him brother Benson he came and said where is the child we said the child is there and I called him to the room and I said you know what I did last night I didn't know uh, I, I don't know how to do it but I just knelt by my bedside and I said God if you were the one that raised that child oh, let me have a part of that power I said ah you have done it and I knelt down he prayed and I and I said the, the sinner's prayer and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Delsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give. That is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. 
His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager student from several nations. 
He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Ben Sindaosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion which ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million 
Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor Paul, and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.